Hey, what's up? My name's Switch Angel. I'm an electronic music artist and performer. And lately I've been using Strudel a lot in my music for performing and also recording. And in the process, I've learned some really interesting techniques for creating rhythms and rhythms that I wouldn't have necessarily come up with otherwise that I would love to share with you. In my head right now, I'm hearing just like an eighth note hi-hat pattern. So let's create that first. So I'm gonna create a new pattern, sound, HH for hi-hat and repeat it eight times in a single cycle. And let's hear how that sounds. All right, it's a little loud. I'm gonna turn it down. Now let's create a kick drum pattern to go with it. So a new pattern, sound, BD for bass drum, and we're gonna use the struct. And what a struct is, is it allows us to put in ones and zeros in order to create a pattern of hits and silences. So let's just type in some numbers here. Uh, zero, zero, okay. All right, so that's fine. It's a little bland though. Um, let's try constructing a polymeter. So let's use, let's delete one of these zeros here. I'm going to use the poly meter, no meter notation, which is just curly braces. And then let's do eighth notes here. Cool. So that's already a bit more vibey. Um, let's visualize it with a punch card. All right. So Let's try a different sound bank. If you can see over in the panel here, if you go to sounds, drum machines, there's a lot of different um, classic drum machines built in. You can also import your own sounds. I'm just gonna use the 909. So I'm gonna create a new variable, call it D bank for drum bank. It can be really called anything though, and assign it to TR909. And then I will pass that variable into the bank function here. Cool. So I'm happy with that for now. Um, so I'm going to create a snare drum pattern. So let's say I know exactly what hits I want the snare drum to be on and to think of Strudel more like a traditional drum step sequencer. So I'm going to create a new sound, snare drum, assign it to our bank. So it's a 909 sound, and then I'm going to use the beat function. I'm going to divide the cycle into 16 parts, just like a 16 step drum sequencer, and specify where I want the hits to land. So I wanted it to land on the fourth hit and the 12. Let's visualize that. So I'm not really that happy with this kick drum pattern, to be honest. So let's try something different. Let's try using Euclidean rhythms. So what Euclidean rhythms are, are basically just using uh, geometry to describe a rhythmic pattern. So um, our first argument here is going to be the number of hits in a cycle that we want. So I'm just going to go with four. And then since we're using 16 steps in the snare drum pattern, let's just use 16. So it's going to separate four hits out evenly over 16 steps. Cool. And now we have like a basic techno pattern and that's cool, but let's try some other numbers too. And we can also pattern this as well. So let's say, let's use cycle notation to say for one cycle, I want five and then the next I want seven. Cool. Now let's make our hi-hat pattern a little more interesting. Um, 
Something I like to do to create sort of trap style hi-hats is use randomness. So we're going to use sometimes by 0.1 for 10%. And then repeat the event twice. And maybe sometimes I wanted to choose between whether it repeats twice or four times, so I can use this choose operator here. Cool. So we've got something a little bit cooler going. Let's speed things up a bit. Um, I'm going to set the BPM to 140 using the set CPS function, um, which means cycles per second. I can convert it to BPM though by specifying 140, which is my BPM, divided by 60, divided by 4. All right, so let's change this bass drum up a little more. I'm kind of hearing like a UK garage type beat in my head. So we're going to get rid of this Euclidean. We're going to use the beat function here too. Seven. 16. Cool, and I feel like that's almost there, but it's a little robotic, so let's try offsetting the events a little bit so it doesn't hit exactly on the note here. So let's do 7.2. Cool. Now it's offset from the grid, just like the tiniest bit. Let's do that here as well. Let's change this to an 11 for the snare pattern. Cool. Next, so that's already pretty groovy. Like you could build this whole song off of this, um, but I want to take it even further and make this rhythm even more interesting. Something I like to do a lot is to pattern the actual drum samples that are being played with randomness here. So I can pattern the kick. I can pattern the kicks randomly within this kick folder within the sound bank using the end function, which means index. So I'm going to do integer randomness and let's do the first five samples. See how that sounds. Cool. So it's choosing a different kick every time, which is cool, but almost a little too random. So we're going to use one of my favorite functions now called ribbon. Um, so this is pretty cool, but for me it's almost like a little bit too random, triggering a new sample in an unpredictable fashion. So we're going to try to constrain this randomness with the ribbon function. And so what the ribbon function does is if you can imagine the whole span of time, as a ribbon, you can cut a piece out of that ribbon and loop it over and over. So we're going to create a ribbon here from cycle zero to cycle one. Cool. And let's say we want this to be two cycles long instead. Cool. And we can try out different seeds as well. So we can start from like cycle 200, for example. I actually really like that. So using on the topic of randomness, uh, let's take our pattern even further by adding a clap sound, just triggered by randomness. So clap sound, we're using 16 steps. So we're gonna repeat it 16 times but we're gonna use the question mark to denote that only half the time we want it to be triggered. Turn it down a little bit. And that's almost like a little too much, so we're gonna degrade this 
by degrade, I mean we're going to remove some events um, with randomness. So let's degrade it by 60%. And now we can use ribbon again to just slice a piece. We can find a seed we like and then loop it over and over. So let's just try from cycle 20, one cycle long. some other ones. Cool. Maybe we'll make this two cycles long instead of one. Cool. I actually like that a lot. So something I like to do when I perform is to increase the energy of the drum pattern um, and find a way to do that quickly and efficiently. So one way I like to do that is by adding a slider in this degrade function from 0 to 1. And say at the beginning of the song you want it to be very sparse. And as the energy builds, you want more of those hits to happen. And just for some interest, let's try doing the same thing over here with the bass drum pattern that we did with the clap. 16 steps, only some of the time. And we're going to degrade it. And we can control the randomness with ribbon. So let's go from cycle 40 and two cycles long. Sick, that's almost like auto cure kind of level of interest. And as the song builds or wanes, I can adjust the slider. hat's gotten a little bit stale in my mind, so let's try to synthesize a hi-hat instead with white noise. So I'm going to type in white here and use a decay envelope. You control how the sound decays. Make it a little bit louder. And now I can use a sine wave to modulate the length of the decay. So sine, I'm going to make it uh, fast four, which basically means the sine will go up and down, up and down, up and down four times in a cycle. And I'm going to constrain that sine wave, because right now it's going to go from 0 to 1, so I'm going to make it go from 0 to 0.1 instead. Maybe 0.2. I can just try different numbers to experiment with different sorts of sounds. Cool. So this is really just like the tip of the iceberg of techniques that I've discovered. I have some more advanced rhythm making techniques that I would love to share as well for creating um, like human sounding rhythmic groupings, as well as techniques for composing melodies and for chopping audio and breaks and stuff like that that I'd love to share. I also have an album out as well if you're interested in hearing my music. 
Uh, all this is going to be in the description, including the pattern that we created today, so you can look at it. I hope if you found this interesting that you subscribe. I'm going to be creating a lot more content like this in the future. I think that this is a really exciting tool for creating electronic music and creating patterns with techniques that aren't really being fully explored by people right now. So it's a really exciting time to be using this tool in my opinion. So all this stuff is going to be in the description. Yep, subscribe and check it out.